react to the problem determines how long you stay in the problem. Your rewards in life are determined by the problems you solve, not the problems you create. Think about that. When you disobey God in the problem, he doesn't get in heaven and suck a Maalox bottle and say, oh, they're not obeying me. His response, he just sends you one more time around that same problem. And you just keep going in a circle in your life. Life becomes a merry-go-round. Think about that. A lot of Christians have confused motion with progress. Believe me, going to 13 Bible studies a month does not make you more spiritual. If you don't know where you're going or how you're going to get there, sit down until you've got it figured out and then go there. Write this down. God will never advance your future instruction until you act in obedience to the last thing he told you to do. Why would God tell you more to do if you didn't obey the last thing he told you to do? God does not force you to obey him. You have something called a free will. Brother, would I like to lunch into that? This thing has so many ways to go. You have a free will, but God does not put you in a position to where you have to abandon your free will, but he gives you the chance to reevaluate your decision about whether you will or will not obey him. Let me give you a couple of Bible illustrations. First, the prophet Jonah. The prophet Jonah disobeyed the Lord. God said, I want you to go to Nineveh. I want you to have a crusade there. These people desperately need to hear the gospel and I want you to go. Let me say this to you clearly. Delayed obedience is rebellion. Say that with me. Delayed obedience is rebellion. Jonah didn't want to go because it wasn't the cool thing to do. He called his travel agent, booked a cruise ship going the other way. Exactly the opposite direction. God wasn't in heaven wringing his hands. He sent a huge storm. Sailors who were not charismatics but were pagans threw the preacher overboard as God was sending jaws surfing through the water looking for lunch. It was actually a great fish, but you've seen jaws. You've got a picture of that. Here he comes. <laughs> And suddenly, he is swimming in the stomach and the juices of fish that are rotting. It stinks to high heaven. And he hears the voice from heaven, Jonah, I'd still love for you to go to Nineveh to preach that <laughs> revival. And I'm going to give you the chance to think about it for three days. At the end of three days, you read the story today when you go home. Jonah is going from no way I'm going there to I love to do your will, oh God. I'm ready to go. God gave that large fish an upset stomach over a preacher. It's happened a lot of times. Spewed him out on the beach. And here came God's apostle of joy with seaweed in his hair, smelling to high heaven. We're going to have a crusade. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, you should see him. You, you need to take a shower. God gave him the opportunity to change his mind. Paul is on the road to Damascus. I'm going to call him Saul because that's what his name was. Saul was, was a brilliant scholar. He was putting Christians in jail and they were being killed. He was, he was the number one tormentor of the New, New Testament church. And on the road to Damascus, God knocked him off of his horse and a bright light filled that place and blinded him. And the voice from heaven said in Hebrew, says the book of Acts, Saul, why are you persecuting me? 
And God let that register with him. And he said, there's a prayer meeting being held down at such and such a street called Straight. And if you will go there, they will anoint you with oil and you'll recover your sight. And I'm going to use you to write most of the New Testament, to create the New Testament church, to define my policy toward the Jewish people and the state of Israel in Romans 9, 10, and 11 that some Christians still haven't figured out. I need you to do that. Now, your choice is go there and be healed. Or you're going to be a blind man with a tin cup on Ben Yehuda Street for the rest of your life. It's your choice. Paul got up, said, I'm with you, Jesus. I'm ready. I'm ready to do your will. God doesn't get upset when you choose against him. He just lets you butt your head into a stone wall until it registers in your cerebral cortex. Maybe I'm not going in the right direction. God gives you the opportunity to reevaluate your delayed obedience, which is nothing more than sophisticated rebellion. The purpose of the problem is not to discourage you, but to develop you. Say that with me. The purpose of the problem is not to discourage you, but to develop you. Your problem is going to make you stronger. Problems are living proof that you are a card-carrying member of the human race. How can you know God is a healer if you have not been sick? How can you know God is a provider unless God has made a way for you and uh, he has given you what you need? How can you know God is a comforter unless you've spent the night in some dark garden of Gethsemane with a broken heart after being betrayed? How can you know that God is a mighty counselor unless you've been in a crisis without an answer and he made a way where there seemed to be no way. How can you know God is a shepherd until you have been lost and without God? How can you know that God is the Prince of Peace unless he's taken you out of a great storm and given you peace that surpasses understanding? How can you know that he's the God of all hope without feeling hopeless? How can you know that? How do you have a problem? That's fantastic. Shout hallelujah, brother. Get off your pity pot and start moving. God's on your side. Great things are about to happen. Give the Lord a shout of praise in the house of God. <laughs> Problems are resistance. If what you're doing doesn't have resistance, it's not worth doing. Without the resistance of water, a ship can't float. Without the resistance of air, those huge jet aircraft cannot fly. Without the resistance of gravity, you can't walk. A rubber band is effective only when it's stretched. Remember the tea kettle. It doesn't sing until it gets up to its neck in hot boiling water and then it whistles. Kites rise against the wind, not with the wind. I like this from Winston Churchill. No, the nose of a bulldog is sloped back so he can bite and breathe without turning loose. I mean, I love that picture. <laughs> what do you see when you look at a mighty oak tree? Remember, it was once a tiny seed that had to struggle and push its way up through the dirt and the rock to sunshine. And there it received the air. And there it fought the storms, the snow, the frost, the high winds before it became a mighty oak. The point is, God uses no one until he puts you in the blast furnace to handle adversity. God is the founder of the university of adversity. You need to enroll. You need to toughen up. I want to tell you the Christians in America need to get a mind that is set on the Lord. We need to become strong in scripture and in spirit. And when the ungodly come against you, we need to look them in the eye and say, yes, I am a Bible-believing, spirit-filled, dedicated Christian without apology. Yeah. 
The problem that infuriates you the most is the problem that God will give to you to, to resolve. You don't like Egypt? Leave Egypt. Never complain about what you permit. Say that with me. Never complain about what you permit. Don't complain about Pharaoh if you refuse to follow Moses. Brother, that'll preach for another 30 minutes, but I don't have them. Don't complain about children who misbehave when you permit it. I raised five children of my own. Raised eight in all, but five of my own. Don't tell me you can't get your children to obey you. You are the boss at your house. You are not the butler. Well, I just can't get them to obey. Hey, I've been to SeaWorld. They've trained a porpoise out there to play basketball. <laughs> you can train your child to carry out the trash, to say, yes, sir, no, sir, go clean up your room. They can do that. Otherwise, you're going to be raising a blank nothing that can accomplish nothing because he's never had a problem in his life. Don't complain about your loveless marriage. Go to the counselor and make it better. Start carrying roses home instead of complaints. Every marriage in this building can be a better marriage. A wife said to her husband, she was getting ready for bed. She was looking into the mirror and she said, honey, I see an old woman. Her jowls have fallen. She needs radical facelift. She needs a tummy tuck. She needs a liposuction. She needs a radical makeover. I'll stop there. She said, tell me something that will lift my morale. Husband said, I've got good news. Your eyesight's perfect. <laughs> As we began 2022, what are you praying for? Are you praying for your family, for your health and finances? Are you praying for our country? Our Heavenly Father is waiting to hear from you. He wants to bless you beyond anything that you can ask or imagine. Hagee Ministries is praying for you and your loved ones to experience the promises of God in the new year. To thank you for your support, we would like to send you an Abundant Living devotional. For your gift of $150 or more, you will also receive a Faith Over Fear daily journal and Hagee Ministries pen, a one-year Pray for America Bible, and a Faith Over Fear mug. Share your hopes and dreams in prayer and see the Lord perform miracles on your behalf. His Word has the power to restore your life. Send your gift today. Call the number on your screen or visit jhm.org slash new you. Has your marriage lost its first love? Well, guess whose fault that is? You can rediscover your first love. The Bible says, husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church. Christ loved the church when the church didn't even know him. God loved the church even when the church did the wrong thing. It's what you do. Don't tell her you love her. Show her you love her. Ladies, can I hear an amen in this house? When you're in the problem, remember that that's what you're able to walk away from that God can bring you to. What you can walk away from determines what God can bring you to. Deuteronomy 6.23, he, God, brought us out, Israel. He brought us out of Egypt that he might bring us in to the promised land. You have to leave Egypt before you can get to the promised land. You can't hold on to both. You have to say no to sin before you can say yes to Jesus Christ. If you do not embarrass sin, sin will embarrass you. You have to walk away from anger before you can embrace love. You have to walk away from fear before you can live by faith. You have to walk away from poverty and with hard work have prosperity that comes from God. 
you have to walk away from depression. The Bible says, receive the joy of the Lord. Some of you are not happy because you don't want to be happy. You control other people with that pitiful story you've got. It only happened in 1982. Get over it for heaven's sake. The Bible says, let no man take your joy from you. You're as happy as you decide to be. The world didn't give you your joy, and the world can't take it away. Give the Lord praise in the house. This illustration about Abraham and Lot, the herdsman got into an argument. Abraham said, Lot, you choose. I'll let you have the land that you want. Lot chose the fertile plains of Jordan. The Bible is an Eastern book. Actually, it's a very Jewish book. And Eastern custom, Abraham, who was the senior citizen, should have been given first choice. There's a verse in this Bible that demonstrates seniorship so well. It says, when a gray-headed man walks in the room, you should stand. That was God's statement to Israel. You don't hear very many sermons about that. People now dye their hair for crying out loud. <laughs> Old age is catching you. I'm going to tell you, dye in your hair. Don't slow it down. <laughs> the Bible is an, is an Eastern book. Abraham should have had first choice, but he gave up that right to be reconciled. There's a word here. Do you want to be reconciled or do you want to be right? Sometimes if you get hard-nosed about being right, you can kiss reconciliation goodbye. And I'm telling you about, about, about your marriage. The word lot means veil. Veil. As soon as Lot left, God said to Abraham in Genesis 13, 14, lift up your eyes now. Look north, south, east, and west. For all the land that you see, I'm going to give it to you. That land is today calls Israel. The point, as long as Lot, the veil, was around, God did not show Abraham his inheritance. The inheritance, the veil, was gone. But the instant the veil was gone, God revealed his inheritance and his divine destiny to Abraham. The point I'm making is that some of you in this audience and some of you watching by television have a lot in your life, a veil that's preventing God from showing you your full potential, your spiritual inheritance. I'm giving some of you in this room and some of you watching by television a rhema word from God today. Let Lot go. Let Lot go. God has a future for you that will blow your mind. He will not show it to you until Lot leaves. If that's not focusing for you, let me turn the dial a little tighter. If you're living with someone you're not married to, send them away. If you're dating someone who wants you to break the Ten Commandments on every day, send that person away. Get Lot out of your life so you can have the joy of the Lord. Good is the enemy of better, and better is the enemy of best. That sounds like a simple phrase, but every one of you are going to get a chance to work that out. Good is the enemy of better, and better is the enemy of best. Let's just say that this is something good, and God gives you something that's really good, and you latch down on it. I like this. And after a few years, God comes back and says, I want to give you something better. And he grabs it and tries to take it away. And you say, no, don't take it away. God yanks it out of your hand and you get something better. Oh, you're so thrilled with this new thing and you hold on to it with just a double grip. 
And then God says, now I want to give you the very best, but I have to take the best away from you to give you something better. And he drags it out of your hand as you're screaming. And when you get the very best, you say, wow, how good is that? God's in heaven saying, I wish you could understand that I'm going to take you from glory to glory, from blessing to blessing. Whenever I take something away, it's because you're going to get something better. Give the Lord a shout of praise in the house. <laughs> Write this down. Intolerance of your present situation, that's called a problem, is the birth pain of your future. The tolerance of your present situation is the birth pain of your future. The purpose of the problem is to motivate you to a new level of accomplishment. And I say this in conclusion. In the Northeast, the codfish are a great commodity. The problem is in the Northeast, they were trying to get codfish to the West Coast in a healthy, robust condition how to catch a codfish on the East Coast and ship it to the West Coast, arriving fresh, alive, and vigorous. They tried salt water, that didn't work. They tried a dozen different things, it didn't work. Then a sailor said, put a catfish in the tank with a codfish. And they said, why? He said, because the catfish is the enemy problem of the codfish. And so they put a catfish in the tank with a codfish. And the catfish chased the codfish all the way across America in that container. And when they got to the West Coast, they were fresh. They were alive. They were full of life. They were stimulated. They were full of vigor. What's the point? Sometimes when you get complacent in life, God drops a catfish in your tank. <laughs> ah. It motivates you to a whole new level of accomplishment. You suddenly become full of vigor because God wants you to have the very, very best. The purpose of the problem, the text, think it not strange concerning fiery trials. Say that with me. Think it not strange concerning fiery trials because God is trying to show you something better than you've ever had in all of your life. He said, at the end of this, you're going to rejoice with exceeding great joy because you've gone through this problem and reached a higher high than you've ever known in God. There are a lot of people in this room and watching by television who are going through a problem. You don't see an answer. You can't figure an answer. God had the answer before the problem ever started. He's going to carry you to the other side. And on the other side of that problem, you're going to have a solution that's the best thing you've ever had in your life. You're going to have joy. You can't even stand yourself. But God's getting ready to do that for you because that's what he wants you to have. Give the Lord praise in the house. Can we stand? How many of you in this room, those of you watching by television, you're going through a problem and you want to get to the other side. You want this thing to be resolved. I want you to slip your hand up right where you are. Most of the people in this room, those of you watching by television, the purpose of the problem is to take you to a new level of success. The purpose of the problem is to show you the grandeur of God, to take away something that's good, to give you something better, to give you something that's the best. And the end result of the problem is the text that these problems pursue produce exceeding great joy. So here's what I want you to do. Right now, I want you just to lift your hands toward heaven. And I want you to pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father in, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you know the problem I'm going through. You know the answer. 
you know the answer. I don't. I don't. I fully expect you, Lord. I fully expect you, Lord. To give me the answer. To give me the answer. And the answer. And is going to prosper me is going to prosper in every way in every way and the lord and the lord is going to give me great joy and the lord is going to give me great joy over this victory over this victory in jesus name in jesus name. now give the lord a shout of praise in the house of god come on now bless his holy name happy new year we pray this year is a time of God's supernatural power in every aspect of your life. Believe today that he has great things in store for your future. We want to thank our friends and partners for your faithfulness and prayers in helping us carry all the gospel to all the world. And now, Pastor Hagee wants to pray a blessing over you. Hagee Ministries is boldly proclaiming the truth of God's Word without compromise or apology thanks to our legacy partners. As a legacy partner, your monthly gift supports humanitarian projects in Israel, relief efforts, and community service initiatives. You will also become an extension of Sanctuary of Hope, a haven for mothers that choose life for their children. Become a legacy partner today. Call the number on the screen or go to jhm.org partner. The End of the Age, the latest book from New York Times bestselling author, Pastor John Hagee. What would you do if you knew the end of the age would happen in the next 24 hours? How would you spend these moments? In his newest book, Pastor John Hagee examines the prophecies of the Bible in the context of the events taking place in our world. With so much misinformation in the news today, we must not forget that he sees the end from the very beginning. The End of the Age, available now at Amazon.com or wherever books are sold. You've been watching Hagee Ministries. If you need prayer, call our prayer line or visit our website. And now, your blessing with Pastor John Hagee. And now may the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. And may the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you, giving you his peace. May you walk in the confidence that when you praise the Lord with your whole heart, lifting up holy hands, that God will scatter your enemies. He will divide the seas before you. He will make the crooked paths straight before you. He will provide water in a land of barrenness. He will give you and your children and your children's children the blessings of Abraham because he is your God. He is your heavenly father, the king of the universe. Nothing will he withhold from you because of his everlasting love for you, saith the Lord unto you this day. Receive this blessing. Amen. <laughs>